Greetings. What is going on? Bubbles. <laughs> Boiling some Jeep parts. Bubbling some Jeep parts. Got this transmission rising from the depth. Look at that. Spa day. Spa day for the old T90. She's loving it. People are asking what this degreaser is, and uh, it's just a biodegradable product I found online. It's uh, Zep Purple or something. It's the strongest one they have. So, yeah, it's nothing that's like terrible. It's not acidic. It's not solvent. It's just, uh, I don't know. Smells fresh and clean. It's California. <laughs> They're well, not going to send things to California. Well, that's a good point, <laughs> right? It is, it is sellable in California, unlike mini bikes and other things. <laughs> so, and yeah. Fireworks and things like it that. It works good, though. So, we got a lot. We got the cylinder head in there, uh, the drive shafts, that Cosmoline engine plate is in there, and then the T90 trans. So, engine block is painted black. It's looking good. Uh, one other point of concern, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, if you receive anything that looks like spam, scam, or anything like that, these little bubble letters are appearing in the quotes, text us at this number, don't fall for it. Email us at Roussel's, uh, custom fabrication at yeah. gmail.com. If you get any communication from us. anyone, it's from our email Roussel's custom fabrication at gmail.com so don't yeah. fall for the scammers i don't know what's going on in the world but we're not giving away free prizes to the next 30 people that contact and we do want to hear from you sure. uh, we want you to comment in the comments and email us yeah. for and real i answer emails back as as much as i can right we don't so. put any of those things out there like you know no. win a free prize if you yeah. text us we're know. old we, we don't we don't know how to do any of that but and what was the other thing i asked you to say the say? other thing was uh regarding commenting and subscribing like if we hit a hundred thousand subscribers is that the number yeah if we hit a hundred thousand subscribers we're gonna get a special surprise i understand we get verified so that means something to somebody well then that way when we get verified so if someone uses your profile picture as spam and there's not a blue check next to it then they know that it's not you stay with us listen to those bubbles this sounds clean we're not here to talk about jeeps for the, for the remainder i love the sound it made Fluid dynamics. You should tell people what today when you're on Facebook Marketplace what you saw. <laughs> what did I see? I see so many things. With the CJs, with the Jeeps. <laughs> we could get a very nice CJ5 with a V6 engine in it, titled running, driving for like three grand. <laughs> Another one for five grand, like just nice Jeeps, right? And they were just like... How deep are we getting into this? It's like you count the hours, but all that aside, it's a labor of love. It's more fun that way. Well, we're learning. Instead of just turning the key and driving it, we're figuring things out. So, yeah. Got an array of parts you'll see in the background. I'm spray painting everything. Not, not a high end resto, just clean it and paint it. So, we're going to go back onto this Chevy something, 40 something project. We're going to talk about sheet metal today. Holy We're, sheet. Holy sheet. We're going to talk about sheet metal. We're going to talk about some of the pitfalls with chopping tops. It's a thing that uh, you'll take these large brush strokes to get pieces in shape as we've done. But it's the minutia, it's the finishing that so many people, including myself, get into trouble with. And there's two points I want to discuss. Because I've done a lot of chop tops, right? We were working fast and furious. We cut it wrong. There is a hole here, and there isn't one on the other side. So the cat, the panels are not coming together as clean as the other side. And uh, the mismatch of the roofs, this is the earlier car skin, and this is the later car uh, sail panel and window frame. 
I bridged up the interior and then uh, set it in place with these self-tapping screws all the way across. So it's a pretty good layup. But the contours are radically different through here. Well, not radically different, but somewhat. See how, this, see how you get this mismatch in panels, right? It's, I'm pushing here and it's raising here. So if you push them both, it could cause a bigger problem somewhere in the panel. So I'm being very, very delicate with how this goes together because that's what will mess a lot of people up towards the end of your wonderful Chop Top project. So I'm going to show how I'm going to get out of trouble right here. If I just take this and clamp it down, again, you're having that raise issue, right? And that's going to happen all through every project when you're joining sheet metal. The flat panels joining are even tougher. The curve has some rigidity in it. You can see I'll be able to get that down, but you don't know until you're just about to the finale. You'll find this little part that just stands up and everybody's going to just try to hammer it in and it's going to wrinkle. You're going to get so frustrated because you've done such a beautiful job preparing. So let's just get right into the work. You can see this is being welded very, very slowly. Uh, Dave chose to cut it in this way. And I followed through on this side, so that's where we're at, taking my time. Got a little humid outside, so it's a little surface rust, but I cleaned it up pretty darn good where I'm working. I think we're going to start here. This is going to be a pretty straightforward task. This is where the trouble could happen. There's a million ways to do things like this, but I found I make a little hook tool as a gauge. So I'll show you after I create this what it's going to do. We have I usually have one of these just hanging around, but I think I used it to dip in the parts cleaning container. I just fold it over like that. Because what it is, I can reach in. You see this panel here, right? We're going to want to know how this panel is overlapping, how much. Because I started to cut back here, but see if you reach in and hook it, you got a definite distance, right? So I went under. And then I put my thumb up to there. So we know that panel's right there. So I'm going to create a little set of layout lines. Because the further over this laps, the more prone it's going to be to raising and kinking. So I don't want to butt weld this because I like a little bit of an overlap for strength as I described so many times. So see, so you got your little hook, just a little mark. Nothing too elaborate. So just a series of dots, nothing too fancy, but now I, you can see that this line is coming right through here. It gets pretty tall right through there. Yeah, see, so you got a considerable overlap That's where it starts to curve. Gotta mark that. Yeah. Right, so we're coming in right around here. So I just want a little bit of an overlap, so I'm going to cut it just below that, and then I'm going to I got a tack weld here, so I'm going to fade it off just about to that tack. Because this isn't going to move. That I'll be able to squeeze right in. Get the cutoff. Let me get the cutoff wheel and we'll do it. A few people have made comments on how I use the grinding discs down to the bitter end. Heck yeah. They're not inexpensive. Especially when you're doing a wide open cut like that. Just use it up. Uh, also less drag on the cordless tool. You got the big wheel, takes more amperage to spin it. Battery goes away quicker. Use them up.
Still nice and clean inside. Got a little bit of a breeze in here. I'm gonna close this door. Sun in our sun in our bits. I don't know how other people work, but I always have so many plates spinning at the same time. So right now, aside from multiple projects in the backyard, multiple projects in the front yard. Keep it moving a little bit. At every angle, things get done. It's dark in here. <laughs> Can you clean my lens for me? Yes. Ooh, you hung the cool windows up. Yeah, they're laying on the table. They're starting to get dusty and mixed with the parts. So uh, those are definitely keepers. Here, let me get that. Let me get that for you. Mm -hmm. Looks clean from this end. Look at you. I see ya. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, much better. Mm. All right, where were we? We're about to start clamping. Yeah, still a little bit of a breeze, but not a perfect world for the tack welds. I'm going to be cupping it with my glove because it's such a nice day. It really is. Nice day. So, I'm going to clamp here. The one cool feature in this car body is it's quite thick through the pillar, so the ends of the clamp aren't actually even really touching. It's pushing it down into the car. It's going to work out. Let's see if I clamp here and see what happens. Oh. Man, it's almost too easy. Oh, here's the trouble right there. Look at that. It just showed itself. Rot row. Yep. So let's grab another clamp and see what develops. That's another thing you're going to run into is the clamps are going to start to stack up. You're not going to have any rare to any room. You know what? It just might go. Here I am trying to create a fuss about all the trouble you're going to get into. See the stress in that tack weld now? That's probably going to pop. I'm going to cut that off. Hear that? That's just one of those things, right? From experience, I, I saw the problem. Again, it's not a big deal, but some people, I would have years ago just hammered that down and you wouldn't have to do it. Look, it's perfect. I'm gonna take out this hard check shape. That that tack weld that was causing all the stress, so it couldn't lay down properly. Uh, in this case, yeah, but uh, the 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 root of the problem was that these curvatures are different. Uh, this one has a much tighter radius than the other one. Um, see how how tight this curve is. Mm -hmm. The gray car was a big bubble, mm. so this area was different. I'm just going to ensure our fit up by putting these screws in place. Oops. Sorry, first day with the new hands. <laughs> Still breaking them in. See that? Just gripped it. You're going to fight that through every join. See? A little hammer work. That'll come right in. Probably going to run into a little mismatch right here as well. Let's see what develops. So 
So this is different than the clamps because it's pulling the panels together, whereas the clamps are sinking it. See how it raised up again? Mm. <laughs> Ricola. <laughs> It's Friday. Oh my goodness. Can't make that prop sound effect up. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> Jamie's going to sound bite that. We're going to use that again. I got one little trim to make. <laughs> I got one screw left in my pocket. Might as well use it. So I, I definitely have another question. What was that noise? No. Well, that too, but so basically the screws are imitating what it would be if it were welded. Correct. Ah. And there's these things called Coleco fasteners, which are the proper tool to use. But we've been through this. I love the tech screws because they are somewhat disposable. You can use them and lose them. They're always sharp. It's interesting being large. My whole life I never knew I was large. It's just a weird thing. All of a sudden you're putting on gloves and no gloves fit. It's just weird. I wonder what it's like to be small. <laughs> just thoughts. <laughs> These are the things you think when you're getting ready to weld. Well, you never know what you look like through someone else's eyes, right? It's right. like... I, not even a mirror really does it justice. But here I am, like trying to put these gloves on every day, and they're two X gloves, and they barely fit. So I like where the screws are holding it together. I'm gonna favor each side of the screw with a weld. Again, moving the heat around, not trying to shrink anything up. Still a little lead in parts of the car, that's what that flash is. These holes I just weld up next. Let that cool down for a second and get on to prepping out this, just like I was doing with the different projects I'm working on, right? It's a little warm. Maybe paint something, maybe do something. Let's discuss that. Looking at this surface here, any old straight edge will do. You know, we want a nice contour. So look at that, it's turning upside down. Can you see the space in here? Yes. All right, we're gonna want it out like that. So I think I'm gonna push out and tack it right to about here, I think. That's a little bit low too, but I'm gonna push in a few spots. And I'm not pushing with my gloves because that's gonna be red hot. Now, because I'm going to fill these holes, I'm going to turn the heat of the welder down. And 
and I talk about this in a lot of the videos, see how I prep the tip with that little ball on the end? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that right in the hole, and that's what's going to start the weld. It's a little bit, probably almost twice as thick as the actual welding wire. So if I set that up like that, pushing the thicker steel into the hole, and it'll bond it. So you got a little bead set. And that sound is called short circuit welding. It's actually a thing if you go to welding school. Some people say, oh, your welder's sputtering. No, it's a technique. Short circuit, you're blowing the fuse. off that's hot let's work here if you look at the other side look how nice that came together what a shame oh wow it's just a little rust from being out in the weather but you got this nice curve right contour is just right so it'll take some cleanup but we want to achieve this same contour so it's not a flat panel it's going to come down to about here, I think. It's going to be like that. I got a piece of the old roof. This is the roof of the gray car. Got just a little curve to it. I don't know if it's enough, though. Ooh. I'm going to ask you one question. I'm ready. What kind of roof has a better curve than that? Oh, I was going to say the Zephyr <laughs> Volkswagen. You're right. <laughs> That'll be too easy. Let's make one on the English wheel. Ooh. Let's say about a hand. Yeah. By a hand. Do a little clean up on this. You don't want any dirt on this because that is such a tight fit up between the wheels. You could uh, put a mark on the wheel and it will forever transfer to your next project. And your end result will be imperfect. Imperfect. Yeah, I don't feel any debris. So, you put this in the wheel, tighten her down. We're trying to create a, a bowl shape as minimal as a, it is of a bowl. This will start to crown it up. Oops, I was taught to not go off the edge. Yeah, so you don't hear any crunching and imperfections. We're not running over any trash. It's just metal on metal.
That's like very low key meditating. It's like ASMR kind of stuff. Just stand there at the wheel. No wonder why some people like make these beautiful creations. Oh. Probably very calming. When you see a car body or any sculpture done in pure metal finish, it's incredible. Unreal. So good. Yeah, that looks on the car. So see, it's it's a dome now. It would hold water. Yeah. A little bit more. That's in the ballpark. I'm gonna go out on this side. So this is a tiny piece of steel. Imagine rolling out a full size of a door skin or a deck lid. Sometimes you'll see two guys and they work in harmony. Or two gals. Two Martians. I mean, if you got thumbs, I guess you can use it. Yeah, that's pretty good. So the edges have no action in them from the wheel. That's why you're starting to see it buckle up. Once I cut that unstressed portion of it away, it'll be a lot less flimsy looking. Could I have just stuck this on at a flat panel and body filled over it? Sure, I've done that a whole bunch, but you just use the tool. I'm going to put this on the table so you can see how puffed up it is. Right? Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, see, I can feel where it's touching. So we're going to just gonna take that off. i take that off. See what happens. Never run your hands along the edge of the steel. Ask me how I know. Now what was the bottom? That? Look at that, it lays right on there. You are on fire today. Hot dang. Fire. But. Who we? Look at that. That's what happens when you take a few days off from building cars. <laughs> or you just luck out sometimes. Yeah, this stacked appearance is kind of a bummer, but it's where we're at. You were doing any kind of a really nice resto, you'd build this panel complete. Yeah, it's a lot of overlap. But I think I'm going to trim this. I'm going to sand. I'm going to. I'm going to grind these down, and I'm going to cut them out from the inside after it's welded. Oh, so it'll lay in there, it gets more flush. It's going to allow me to put a couple screws in here as I'm welding. And uh, same as the other side, you know, these overlaps, I, I always go in and trim them back because you'll see the heat marks on the inside and you just trim that up. Yeah, let me grind it first, I forgot. <laughs> Okay. 
can't argue with that. Yeah, I'm just going to put some support back here inside of that with a piece of steel and start tacking. Challenge here is you don't want to sink the panel. It's starting to warm up, and uh, if it gets too hot, as it constricts, it's going to shrink. It's going to pucker under. It's going to go upside down or flatten out. Let it cool off. We're going to look at this again. Things happen when you're working in a rush with friends. You got this little turn up right here. I'm going to cut through that. Just take it off. What a bummer. It's quick and dirty. It's unfortunate we made a few miscuts, but uh, both cars were pretty rough and raw, so it was just an experiment. There's a learning curve, I think, for Dave also. I will cop to the fact that it was my miscall on this, and he got a little wily with the grinder over there, so... One for one. <laughs> Okay, 
So we got one damaged area. I wonder if we just take this deck lid off and access it with a clamp. That sounds like a great idea. The old deck lid access trick. See that? Self tapper screws. They're your friend. So see, this is going to do the same thing because it's welded here. Watch that. Oh, see, that's always the problem. There's those jack stands I've been looking for. <laughs> A little junk in the trunk. You've been looking for those? Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Where are the jack stands? They're around here somewhere. Sure were. Good thing I looked. I would have sent this car back to Dave with the jack stands. This is going to pretty much go back to him. I thought it was going to be my car, but then we got to talking. It might be his car. We're still talking. This car got pretty pretty beat up. A real pro would make this whole panel over. Would you do it with the English wheel like you did that back part? Yeah. You are at a crossroads, Mr. Russo. Well. In talking with Dave, I think he really wants to finish this car. So uh, I wasn't really in love with the first project that got hit by the barn. And uh, this was a good lesson. I think uh, getting that Zephyr in and talking with Victor about the Cadillac. I think I'd rather just fix this. I mean, we're all going through this process together. Um, this is very similar to that piece uh, in that it will be rolled out. But uh, I think I'm just going to do that off camera. I'd like to do something a little more exciting. That bug project was getting a little uh, redundant, I think. Not that it wasn't exciting, but it was the same thing over and over. This car, I mean, just take a step back and look at the roof swap and the chop, right? It's all represented, both sides now. It's just a matter of finish welding. And uh, I wasn't going to finish this car to completion, but the Cadillac. This thing, you know Victor, right? It's his car now. It's so nice it's not windy. This is the <laughs> Caddy Whacked. I think it's a 38. I can't forget, remember, 36 or 38 Caddy. Alan Benuelos and I got crazy on this and we just mashed up a bunch of stuff. Victor saw it and he's like, that's the ugliest car I've ever seen. What's it gonna take to get that? <laughs> So we came to terms, and now it's his. He's got a big commercial uh, blaster, uh, soda blaster, whatever. We're going to clean this entire thing and get it in the shop. He says he's got some really interesting ideas for it. So I think that's what we're going to step to next. This 41 Chevy, cool project. We worked on it. It's out the door. Um, Dave, I think, is going to finish that up. We're going to store it for a bit. Uh, I think the excitement with that project was the roof swap, and that's done. The rest is redundant welding, grinding, filling, etc. So this is going to go through a couple radical changes for sure. Yeah, and we want to introduce those of you that are not familiar with Victor, introduce you to Victor. He's a oh, pretty right. amazing. I forgot. Yeah, there's a whole history. I've known Victor for 
25 years. Yeah, 25 years. I met him in 98, so even longer. And you guys, cool have, you guys have made some incredible... You can look at our, you can look at our other videos, uh, especially on our YouTube. I did the tour of all the different projects, so we're finishers for sure. That project is just going to take a sidestep. He got lit about this. He's like, I want to do this. Let's do it. So uh, that's what we're up to next. See ya, Chevy. We're on to the caddy.